Here in the paint workspace, we can inspect our baking result and begin to tweak our textures. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a duplicate of this color layer. That way I can always get back to the original if I need. With that done, the next thing I want to do is hide the voxel object because it's taking up the same space as the paint object. There are two ways to do that. One is to go to the Vox Tree layer panel, which is a copy of what you have in the Sculpt workspace, and we can hide that voxel object here. Or we can go to the View menu and uncheck Show Voxels in Paint Room. I'll hit the Wireframe hotkey, and you can see our Auto Retopologize Mesh. Hit that hotkey again to turn it off. And I'm also going to switch to Flat Shade. This way I don't have any glossiness or shadowing obscuring the textures as I begin to clean them up. Now let's bring up the 2D Texture Editor. If you don't already have it docked somewhere here in the UI, you can bring it up through the Textures menu, Texture UV Editor. I like to assign a hotkey to it so that I can place it where I like, scale it, and then if I'm done with it for a while, I can exit by clicking on the little X in the upper right hand corner. And now when I hit my hotkey, it'll come right back in the same location, in the same scale as it was before. You can also dock it, and that's what I'll do now. I'll bring it over to the inside of this column and I'll see the little preview or the little purple highlight and I'll let go. It's now docked to the inside. You could also dock it all the way to the left hand side and that way you have the tool panel right in between the two views. But we'll go ahead and proceed now and I'm going to right click and drag to zoom in anywhere in the open space. If you hold down the Alt key you can right click and drag anywhere inside the UV space. But Without the Alt key, when you right click and drag left and right inside of a UV island, 3D Coat will increase or decrease the scale of your brush. If I do that outside of a UV island, right click and drag, I'm zooming. Okay, Middle mouse click and drag to pan. You can also turn wireframe on and off. I'll go back to the Paint Layers panel, and this is very much like Photoshop. So if you've got a Photoshop background, most of the tools are very similar. The one thing that we're going to use quite often in this video is the eyedropper or the sampler tool, which is nearly identical to what you have in Photoshop, except the hotkey for it by default is V, whereas in Photoshop it's I. But you can change it if you like. You can hover over the tool and hit the end key on your keyboard, that's E-N-D, and then make the assignment if you like but I'm going to leave it at default. I can hover over the area that I want to sample, hold down the V key, click what I want to sample, and let go of the V key, and it brings me right back to the brush or the tool that I was using previously. You can also add it to your color swatches if you like by clicking this little icon. You can also just as you would in Photoshop, change your foreground and background color. So I'm going to hit X just as I would in Photoshop to swap foreground and background. I can sample another color here. So let's hold down the V key. I'll sample that side. And again, in the color swatches, if I want, I can click there. They're very similar, but the point is I can use the X key now if I want to work on both sides to swap back and forth between the foreground and background color. So I'm going to go with the airbrush. It's a little bit softer. And crank my fall off up to about 50% or so. In the E panel, these different brush draw modes are all affected by your brush pressure. So as you hover over them, it will tell you what it affects. I also want to make sure before I do anything that I check the channels that I'm working on because you have three primary channels. You have depth, color, and glossiness. You can paint with all three channels simultaneously on any given layer. 
And when you click on one, you're simply making that channel inactive as you work. So yeah, let's go ahead and finish up here. I'll hold down the Alt key, right click and zoom in. And I can adjust my opacity here. This particular draw mode allows the opacity to be modulated with brush pressure. So the harder I press, the greater the opacity. At any point in time, if I want to smooth, just as I would in the sculpt room or with a brush tool inside the Retopo workspace, I can hold down the shift key and it will smooth on the fly. I can also use the color operations tool and you can see it basically has a number of different brushes, just like Photoshop has a few brushes tucked into one icon you have the same thing here. You have all these different operations. Saturate, desaturate, dark and lighten, and sharpen, and smoothing, or blur, uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, again, you can choose smoothing here, but for our purposes, we'll just stay in the airbrush and we'll just rely on holding the shift key. Now let's look at the clone stamp tool. Just as you would in Photoshop, you would hold down a modifier key to sample a particular spot. Here you've got a number of different options to choose from in the Tool Options panel. We'll just stick with the default translation. So rather than holding down the Alt key in 3D Coat, it's the Control key. So I'm going to Control click. That will set the point where it's actually going to clone from. Then I can do that over here. From this point forward, I'm going to dispense with the tool explanation and just get started. And I'll also speed up the playback to make efficient use of our time. The only tools I'm really going to use are the clone stamp tool, the sampler tool, the air, and the paintbrush.
All right, so for demonstration purposes, I think this will suffice. Our main goal was to clean up the really rough areas. There's a lot more work that we could do, but it really just depends on the requirements for the job, as you know. And with that, we'll bring the series to a close regarding the cleaning up of 3D scans inside 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.